to the West Beach Knits channel. My name is Laura and this is episode three of the Knitting and Sewing podcast. You can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as West Beach Knits and at westbeachknits.com and those areas are focused on knitting and the designs from West Beach Knits. You can also find me as Petit Passions on Instagram and on my blog petitpassions.com where you will find a lot more wider knitting and sewing content, pattern reviews, tutorials, tips, that's all over there as well. So do head down and check out both places, I'll put links down below. And I will also put a link down below for the West Beach Knits mailing list, because if you're signed up to that, then you can get the um, early bird and larger discounts on any pattern releases as they come out. So mailing list subscribers have just recently had in their inbox a uh, buy one get one half price on the Bay City hat and mitts set which is really good if you're looking to use up one skein or sport weight yarn because you can get both the medium hat and the medium mitts out of the one skein. But do go ahead and subscribe because Coming out very, very soon is the Sandy Point hat and mitts as well. So there will be discounts coming out through there. And thank you to everyone who's already subscribed to this channel. So there's quite a few of you who have joined recently. Thank you for um, subscribing and liking the videos. And especially thanks to those of you who've left um, comments saying hi, saying where you're from, saying what you think. Um, do continue to do that. I love seeing uh, where everyone's coming from because we're coming from all over the world. And um, yeah, say whether you're here mainly for the knitting or the sewing or whether you're um, into both. So speaking of knitting and sewing, I'll get straight into it. Uh, first of all, with what I'm wearing. This isn't a new um, recently finished object, but um, it is a good one actually. Um, a nice pattern. It's the napkin sweater by Claire Mountain and it was in issue 5 of Lane Magazine and it is a bottom up sweater knitting the round and it's got these extra details you can see side panels and there's nice um, touches at the sleeves as well that was what really drew me into it actually and in reality there we go that's what I really like those little sleeves and the bits at the sides as well so as I said it's a DK weight pattern and the yarn I used was from Knit Crate they had this beautiful DK blend um, a while ago and you got two skeins so I ordered two crates and the four skeins um, were just enough for the sweater. I haven't really got any leftovers to speak of. Uh, and I'll leave links below to my Ravelry project page and to the page on the blog, which talks all in detail about the exact blend of the yarn and the adaptations I made as well, because it is bottom up knitting pieces and um, so that means a lot of purling as you go. I'm not a big fan of that because it just takes longer. And this actually can be quite quick. It was quite quick for me, I felt, um, to knit. So I did adapt the pattern so that it could be knit in, uh, in the round up until where the uh, shaping begins for the um, armholes. So up to about here, it was knitting the round. And then I had to switch to um, knitting flat. I really like this neck uh, band. It's a folded over collar, nice and high, um, which is perfect really for this cold January day, which we've got right now. The sleeves as well. I knit in the round up until the armhole and where we're shaping the sleeve caps and then they're just um, sewn in. So yeah, nice and quick to knit, really cozy and warm. This is my only DK weight sweater and I kind of feel I should have more. Um, 
in the collection probably more to come but it, yeah if you fancy seeing how that adaptation worked because there are you do have to fiddle about a bit to get those side panels because obviously the instructions are um, slightly different um, details are on the blog so go check that out on another note this is a really lovely issue of this magazine I don't have all of the issues but I do have quite a few because I really love A their photography but there are some really really interesting patterns and I think this issue five is um, a particularly good one. There's lots in here on my make list. If you've made anything out of this magazine, um, put a link to it down below. If it's on your Ravelry page or your um, blog, do put it in because I'd really like to see what some of these look like made up. So that is what I'm wearing right now. Off the needles, there's not a lot to be fair in terms of finished objects um, for knitting, but I did have loads and loads last time. What I do have is a finished pair of socks. So I did have, I had finished this one before, and you might remember in the last episode, I had knit this sock down to about here, and then I had to rip it all out because I realised that the feet weren't going to match on the stripes. And I did all of that working out exactly where and when. I worked backwards really, so that at least those bits matched. So I've now knit the second one. You can see they definitely don't match. Um, and there was none of this colour I don't think really to be had to make that match. I've got the tiniest bit left over. I used pretty much everything. So they are finished. This was this was using one 50 gram skein of Knit Picks Felici um, so self striping sock yarn in their Beyond the Wall colorway, which um, if you're looking to make a pair of men's socks, this is for um, a UK size 10 foot. So it's 72 stitches and that's about 10 inches from heel to toe then you might want to consider using two skeins i probably wouldn't again but um sorry i probably wouldn't and i would still use the one skein again but these um legs aren't long enough um, they'd be long enough for me but my husband's not really keen he, he would rather have them longer if i was to do them again so I would probably, if I was doing these again, add in a couple of stripes um, using the West Yorkshire Spinners contrast yarn or the Cosmic Strings um, contrast yarn again. But he's wearing them, so they must be okay. <laughs> they are actually, the Knit Picks um, Felici on is quite a nice sock yarn to wear as well. I did have more problems, so I am um, knitting, I've got thousands of ends to weave in, but that was fine. So I got as far as there, I knit the new heel using um, fish lips kiss heel method. I realised I had loads of extra yarn left over and wondered why that was. And I realised it was because I needed to have built up a stripe before I started the heel. So I took that out again, did the heel again, and then carried on trucking and got the rest of it finished. So it did take a lot longer than it should have done. I basically knit three socks instead of two, uh, <laughs> but they're done and finished. So I really do like the colourway though, beyond the wall. And I think they're about $6 a scale. So really quite, um, for $6, $8, I still think it's good value. And if you've got the minis for the contrast, even better. So more Knit Picks for Leachy actually, because you might remember my ones in the Drama Club colourway, 
And again, I used a 50 gram skein, but I used it for the cuffs as well. And I only had contrast heels and toes. Um, I had a heel uh, malfunction, uh, hole developed. And you probably remember as well, I said, oh, highly unlikely that I will have fixed that by next episode. I'm not good at fixing, but I did. And I cut out the heel completely, picked up the stitches, and then oh, on both sides, and then just worked it like I do for the toe. Um, and it, this was using that same um, West Yorkshire Spinners sock yarn in grey colourway. So that is done. And they are the same length as my previous ones uh, on the foot. So technically they should fit just fine. Um, they don't. I, I really don't know why, but they're just not as comfortable anymore. I don't know if maybe just this heel construction is not for me. So, I mean, I can live with that until, and I, and I have lived with that, and I have worn them, and that's okay, and until this happened. Yeah. This is my other pair. I do not have one scrap of this yarn left, otherwise I would fix that hole, but I can't. So this heel is going to have to come out and be rebuilt, but I really don't want to use the um, toe method that I used on this one. So um, again, please leave me a comment because what I really want is a heel that I can use as an afterthought heel that isn't a classic one. I need something either more like the Fish Ships Kiss heel, um, which fits me okay. My preferred heel is the heel flap and gusset on a cuff down sock, but I can't have that in this now, can I? Uh, I don't think. If you do know, please leave me a comment, a link to something, anything. Um, that now needs to be done. Won't be happening soon because I did really get, I was really proud of myself for that and I can't believe that's happened. So it just goes to show use yarn that's intended specifically for socks on heels. Things that are going quite well. My project bag here. We're on to whips now, that is it for work for finished objects. Um, but I've got quite big works in progress now. This is my stump sweater from We Are Knitters. And this is in progress as we speak. I finally cast it on. It uses their uh, cotton, Pima cotton yarn, which is, um, just check you can see there, in the wine colourway. This is the third skein I'm on at the moment because I've been going great guns. And I have, I finished all of one side, with the, that's probably going to be the back, and I'm on to working the lace on the other side as well. So yes, it is a pot, another bottom-up sweater that's designed to be knit flat and then pieced together. We all know I don't like doing that, so I cast it on in the round. There we go. And I took off one stitch at each side, so a total of four stitches um, taken away because they would normally go into the seam at the sides. So I was trying to keep the stitch count. I think I'm, yes, I'm knitting the small size because um, the finished measurement seemed to fit more what I would like. And then I separate, I've separated out and I'm knitting the um, front and the back lace separately. So, and in order to do that, I then had to increase a stitch at each side because this is going to be seamed. So, that didn't really make much of a difference because my stitch count is completely out on this. You know how when you're, um, you get to the end of the row and in the instructions you should have um, 
knit the last two stitches and you get there and you've got oh I've got four oh I've got six and oh I've only got one so I've had quite a lot of that so although actually I mean I don't think you'd know looking at it I think that looks like a perfectly acceptable piece of lace work um you know if you're wearing it master knitters would probably notice straight away I I think that's okay um, yeah, it kind of, I kind of bodged it and made it work. So it is there, but I don't know how it happened. I think I've just, there's a lot of yarn overs and decreases and things. So, that, well, that's how it happened. But I was paying attention. I was watching other stuff, but I was paying attention. So that'll probably end up being the back. The only thing I would say about this yarn is you can probably see um, I wonder where there's probably you might be able to see it now oh, okay so over here for instance in this area you can see um, where the yarn is splitting as you knit it and because you've got all of these sort of um, Slipstick pearls and purling um, around and through and everything. It, you, you're having to sort of twist quite a lot and move things around. And yeah, there's definitely a lot of yarn splitting that's happened as things have been knit. Which generally is kind of resolved, but in some places is quite obvious. So that is the only thing. Yeah, I've got another loose bit there. Maybe I can see. That's the only thing I would say with this yarn, which disappoints me a little bit because a lot of these um, kits using this yarn are aimed for beginners and um, uh, it would be happening even more. It did happen even more on my very first kit as well. So that's just something I'm sure it's probably occupational hazard of um, cotton yarn. Again, leave me a comment down below if that's the fact or if it's just my really poor knitting skills. Happy to be called out on that because I'm not an expert by any means. Also in the project bag, things, I remember over Vlogmas I kept umming and ahhing over these projects but I finally got them started is my blanket so this is another big one that's going to be going on for quite a while more knit picks yarn this is their upcycle worsted wool in caramel or camel or something like that and i never did find a pattern that i really liked the look of so i've just cast on and started working so i'm using chow goo size nine needles so that's 5.5 millimeters and it's 37 inch cable so a good meter or so there and i've measured and that i've held it up against the sofa and yeah i like the length of that so i've just cast on and i'm working i've been working some seed stitch as a border you can see i've got stitch marker in there now so that that border can um continue up vertically and I'm just now working a garter stitch section so my idea is that I'm going to have some stripes going up mainly garter stitch but uh, so some nice garter stitch chunks punctuated with something uh, narrower as you go up I am not too sure yet whether that's going to be something really simple, just pearls, or whether I'm going to put in a little bit of brioche, or both. Um, I did think about chevrons as another chunk. Well, whatever it is, I want it to be reversible, just like the seed stitches and garter stitches, so that however it's sitting on the um, sofa, it's the right way. 
So, um, we'll see how that goes. If it turns out as um, something nice, <laughs> pattern worthy, I'll write it up. Um, and probably put it as a freebie. Just in case anyone else fancies it. And that is it's living in my knitters project bag, which again is on the blog. If you felt if you're a sewist and you fancy making your own, because they are incredibly simple. And that's mainly it for finished objects and whips in knitting. The only thing that I do have that is also finished is the Sandy Point hat. So this is um, West Beach Knits design. It's a sport weight hat, because I do like a bit of sport weight, and it's just got this um, uniform texture all over. In this sample is knitting La Bienna May Merino in the damask colourway. And it's really lovely and simple. It's so, it is a really quick, I know hats are quick, but this one particularly is because it's just the same nearly all the way up. When you get to the crown decreases, um, it does get a little bit more complicated there. You do have to pay attention just for um, the, the last couple of inches. But you're decreasing, so there's not so many stitches involved there. And this is the small size and there are two more sizes available medium and large oh I can't see there you go just classic beanie pretty good um like I say because it's so quick they're as handy as a gift as well so that will be coming out very shortly if not already by the time that this is published I'll put details down below and for lovely um, YouTube viewers I'm going to put along here and down below a code for you to get 15% off right up until the end of February on the Sandy Point hat so Sandy hat 15 that will give you 15% off and the reason I'm going to leave that all the way up until February so it'll probably go past the next um, podcast actually is because in testing right now we also have the matching mitts, Santa Point mitts. So again, these are uh, this again is um, La Bien and Mer La Bien and A Merino Sport. This is their Quartz Fume colorway, and these are the left. This is the leftovers that I had from the Spellman sweater. So I used three skeins, I got the Spellman sweater and these out of it, about 40 grams, and this come, these come in two sizes. So they're currently in testing, they'll be out in February, so that code will last you right until the end of February. So yeah, something for you um, YouTube viewers. If you sign up to the mailing list, though, you'll get more of. Okay, so that's most of the knitting. The only other thing I wanted to show you was um, the results from using this Knit Picks again. I should, I'm not sponsored by Knit Picks, I just happened to get a lot. Of, I ha recently had a large delivery, so everything from Knit Picks. Um, their lint shaver. So that's the little brush you can use as your um, shaving. This is about $4, so a lot cheaper than a lot of the Gleaners. That you can find online and I'll show you I took some video of before and after because I used it for this jumper sweater so moving on to sewing and finished objects in that field which I've got nearly to so you can see I've quickly changed to show you the sew over at Molly top that I've made yes it's winter yes I've made a t-shirt um, 
because I just needed um, a quick, successful make. And I wanted it to be from my stash. I'm really trying to use up what I've already got. Um, so, yeah, saw how much I had left of this from my slash neck top. I bought the fabric from John Lewis a long time ago. I had a metre and a half and I've made my slash neck um, Breton top, which is basically a hack of the Tilly and the Buttons Agnes top. And I've just about just had enough left to make this t-shirt. Okay. And as I say, it's the sew over at my top. It's from their uh, City Break ebook, which I've made loads of the patterns from. I love that ebook. And it's really simple because, and this is also partly why I used this pattern, because I didn't have much fabric, but you don't need separate sleeves. So the actual pattern is a, is a long sleeved um, top made for knit fabrics, and you've just got the front and the back and the neckband. But the, um, the way it's designed is a long sleeve top with the sleeves that come down to here, um, to the shoulders and then you attach the sleeves after. Doesn't really work for me, it doesn't look right. But it does as a t-shirt. So I just use the pattern as it is and I've folded up from where it finished and just stitched literally just there and there. Um, I did initially stitch down the whole cuff but it didn't really work very well. So I've got it there, I just fold it up when I put it on that's fine. Stripe matching at the sides is a bit more difficult on these shoulders. I think I did a better job when I had the chunkier stripes, but I have managed it fairly well along the sides there. I'm happy with that. And the neck band, move in. I did have to take this off and reattach it because even though the middle points and the side, you know, all of the notches lined up, there was something happening here in that front and centre where it wasn't um, symmetrical. And because we've got the white lines and they're so obvious, that did take a little bit of work. But that's all done now, ready to wear for summer or in layers over the spring. So super quick, super fast. Like I said, you've only got front, back and neck band and you're away. So that is the Molly top and I'm going to go and get changed to show you my second nearly finished object. Back again and back into my jumper because although the um, sky is clear and sunny, it's January and and this is very nearly finished, just so close to finishing. I probably should have quickly um, finished it before the podcast so that I could actually wear it. But I can't because it's got no buttons. And that's the only thing I need to do. So this is the Merlilo shirt from Deer and Doe Patterns. I've used this shirt quite a few times actually and there's um, two variations there. You can have the short sleeve with the um, just the button stand, uh, collar stand um, style or you can have the more full shirt. So the only thing I need to do on this is add buttons but I'll talk you through a few of the other things on here as well. So this fabric this um, really bright Day of the Dead fabric is from Falcon Fabrics in Chichester. Um, I don't think that they have an online store. Um, it's one of those places that have loads of huge bolts on um, really good value. So this fabric was £6 a metre. It's not your full 150 width. It is a narrower width of fabric, but it is just plain um, cotton and um, I think there was even 25% off that as well. So I had three metres to play with, because I want a couple of cushions to, as well to brighten up the sitting room. 
and I wanted to make a shirt because um, in the summertime, so I'm still thinking about summer, uh, in the summertime when I'm going out for walks um, it's quite breezy down on that beach so it's handy just to have something with sleeves that you can put on for a bit um, and then take on and off as you need, tight around your waist etc. And I thought this looked fun uh, for that. So yeah, it's pretty out there. It's not what I would normally wear. I'm normally quite plain. Um, but I, yeah, I just liked it. So I used the Melly Low Passion um, just because I know that it works and fits and it's not overly complicated. It has just a plain back. So there is no yoke and there's none of the sort of having to do that burrito method. You can just sew straight in there. And that's another reason why I picked it. So this pattern has, we've got shaping with the darts there at the bust. You have um, the placket there, your buttonholes and buttons. And I have, I've got as far, I've even sewn and stitched and opened up the buttonholes. I just haven't sewn on the buttons yet. We've got the collar as well. This is not the exact collar that is in the pattern. The pattern is a rounded collar, um, which you can see there. Not my thing, so I just straightened it off for a sharper, um, regular style collar. And I did have to take the neckband off and redo it because I hadn't got it lined up properly. Now, you can, I have interfaced the collar and I probably should, might not have done actually. If I was doing this again in this fabric, I might have got away without interfacing it. As you can see, it's quite stiff and bulky up there. But I'm sure I can iron that out a bit more. And then you've got sleeves, and the sleeves have are just normal setting sleeves. They fit in really well. Where are they? There we go. So it's slightly dropped down, and there's never any, you don't have to do any gathering up there. Sleeve cuff, this is the fiddly bit, because you have this um, placket there which when I've sewn my button on, you can close up. And there's pleating in there as well. Now, my sleeves are different. <laughs> I didn't, somehow, I, I, mar I made the wrong marking. So you have a marking for where you are going to attach the placket and cut all the way up. And then you fold it in and out and that's how you end up with all of that in there and I just got it in the wrong place so that placket is in slightly different places on both sleeves but I don't really mind that it's not going to really affect how I wear it because I shall probably be wearing it with the sleeves rolled up anyway and you've got which you probably can't see there's a curved hem which I Probably, if I was doing this again, I should have thought ahead, I would just have a straight um, hem because then you can do a fold over much more easily. Whereas this has had to um, be quite a narrow fold over because you've got quite a, you've got quite a sharp curve in there. But that's a real classic shirt look so if you're making this in silk or something it's fabulous but here we go we're ready to go on that and the thing i could say that's holding me up and probably because i'm not that way will hold me up for a while is what kind of buttons to put on so i've got this bag of mixed buttons we've got blues whites and pinks one of these bags that you get for a pound of Amazon uh, type thing and all of which would go nicely so I'm just deciding which ones to stitch on I might do um, a mixture seeing as it is quite a um, 
varied pattern. Why not? So this is almost finished and I'll probably put on my Insta Petty Patterns Instagram and on the blog is where the, fin the real final finished ones but I thought I'd show you because I'm so close to being finished and um, yeah it fits quite well. I made the, I can't remember what size I made, it'll go, have to go on the blog, same size I always make. And yeah, I think it will hold up to wear. I say it's a fairly stiff cotton. Is it quilting cotton? Yeah, it actually probably is. So it'll do the job for summer. You'll certainly see be able to find me quite easily <laughs> on the beach. So yeah. That shirt's hanging out on Lady Penelope until I sew on the buttons and that's what's quite handy for having a dress form when it comes to something like buttons is that it's really much easier to um, line up where the holes are and get your button in the right place so yeah do not my dress form then I've only got two other things uh, sewing wise one is well they're both kind of intentions so one is this um, in fewer in Vlogmas, you probably saw that I tackled my box of woe, which had a dress, the Solina dress, where one of the ties had come off. And that was from three metres of this fabric that I bought from the textiles centre at one of the knitting and stitching shows. And I've got this much left over. So, originally, you can see I actually made it into a garment. I've made it into a long skirt with um, this side tie business. And um, I'm not going to wear this skirt. I won't wear it as a skirt. Because I just don't really wear long skirts that much. So I want to refashion it. I think I did try it on for length. Because I wanted maybe to get a, I thought I might be able to get a dress out of it. Just a summer dress, probably sleeveless. I can't see me being able to get sleeves out of that if I was doing a dress. Maybe recycle some of this, these ties um, from around the waist. But I think it's going to be too short, really, to do that. So... Then it's thinking about, so if it's too short for a dress, that then makes me think tops. And again, I could use the fabric, it's fairly stable fabric, so I've got no problems using it width ways instead of length ways. I'm not even sure. Yeah, the grain does go that way. So I might make just a little t-shirty thing. Something that you, can, you know, the kind of thing that you can wear for work when it is just really, really hot. Um, not too sure yet. So that is on my making plans for the next couple, for the next month. I do that if I can get a dress, some dress, I will do. If not, then it'll be a top. And then, freshly arrived today, so freshly arrived, I haven't even unfolded it from where it came in the post is this suiting fabric from Minerva Crafts so this is it's a suiting fabric it's got viscose in it and it's I quite like this it's a grey taupey colourway obviously I'm liking it <laughs> basically a dark version of this and I had intended for this to become these i'm thinking i've got to I've got to put it through the wash and um see how it comes out almost no it doesn't i thought for a moment it might have a herringbone look in it but it doesn't so it's certainly thick enough for trousers i did think it might be too thin but I think I can get a pair of trousers out. I'm thinking of doing 
view A, which is the longer version with pockets, but slightly cropped, which is view B. Um, but I'm not too sure. You get cleaner line without pockets. So um, we'll figure that out. But yeah, they're just basically smart pair of trousers for work. I do have another pair of trousers ready to wear once from Topshop that I would quite like to replicate. But I think this fabric's thicker than that one. So, could potentially have a pair of trousers in this lovely um, suiting fabric. Again, I'll leave a link to this exact fabric down below so that if you want to have a look yourself, you might be able to go and grab some. I'm, temp I'm always tempted for a dress. I do like wearing dresses for work and this feels nice and sturdy. So it'll either be a work dress, tailored work dress or tailored trousers. Um, you see how it washes and how it feels once it's uh, had a bit of an iron as well. There we go, it's from Minerva Crops. Thank you, Minerva. This actually, I should say, has been um, sent to me as part of the um, Minerva Bloggers Network. So I haven't paid for this myself. Um, it's for me to have a try out and tell you what I think of it, which I will do. And I always give my honest opinions as well. So that's all my knitting and sewing that's been going on. Um, thank you to everybody who has, like I say, given us a, a follow um, or a like or left a comment. It's really lovely reading those and seeing what you think and also your helpful opinions <laughs> as well. So the main thing I need help on is um, what to do about that sock heel at the moment. Um, really appreciate that so again if you haven't already do sub subscribe to that mailing list because that there will be more discounts coming um, for the sandy point hat and mitts which are coming out over the next month i really hope that wherever you are in the world you are safe and well we're in another lockdown over here in england so, um, so I think generally this lockdown has been tougher for a lot of people. So um, I hope that your knitting and sewing is keeping you going because it certainly is for me and um, hanging out with all of you definitely helps along as well. So thank you for coming to join me and I will be seeing you soon.